Speaker, Honourable Premier, Honourable Cabinet Colleagues and Members of the Parliament, the Head of the Department and the Head of Cape Nature in the absentia, they are both sick, um, invited guests, colleagues and friends. As the Department with a broad mandate that includes the environment and development planning, the past few years has become increasingly difficult under prevailing environmental conditions. We are sitting in the middle of the world once in 400-year 400, 400 drought, and the impact has been devastating, particularly in the agricultural sector. Despite the workload increasing and the pressures mounting, we see the budget for this vital area of government keeps getting sliced thinner and thinner. As an example, I would like to highlight one statistic from the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning. Under the current budgetary constraints and conditions, the Department currently has 544 approved positions on the organigram. Because of the funding constraints and frozen posts, 180 of those posts are currently vacant, and there is no money available to appoint more staff. The result is that our work is constrained to some extent. Despite that constraint, the Department has met all its targets in the past year and continued output by the Department remains world class. Achbar Deputy Speaker, die verlammende droogte bly hoe aan die gedagtes soos wat ons hier vergader. Die droogte en die gepaardgaande ramp is harde houwe wat ons vat, waarvoor ons nie gevraad nie, maar wat ons bestuur so goed as wat ons kan. As provincie het ons geen rol in die uitrol van waterinfrastructuur nie. Dit is een nationale regeringsverantwoordelijkheid en dit maak my bang as ek moet kyk na wat ons nationale collega's sê en doen wat betref nieuwe waterprojekte vir ons provincie. Daar is op die oomlik bykans geen nieuwe werkelijke projekte aan die gang of beplan vir langtermijn watersekerheid in die Westkaap nie, ten spuite van die langdurige droogte wat, tans, wat ons tans ervaar. Die enigste goed project waaraan meer as 2 miljard reeds pandeer is, die verhooging van die klein William Dam wel is gestaak en gaan nie meer voort nie. Ons moet vraag wat aan die gang is by die nationale departement en ons moet begin gesels oor die werkelijkheid van water en die bestuur daarvan op een provinciale vlak. Dit is internationale beste praktijk dat waterbeplanning en die ontwikkelingsbeplanning geïntegreerd word en dat water op een provinciale vlak bestuur moet word met gepaardgaande begrotings. Dit is nie tans die situasie in Zuid-Afrika nie. Ook nie hier in die Westkaap nie, waar ons watersake grootliks dier ambtenare in Pretoria bestuur word en met min kennis van die provincie sy algehele ontwikkelingsdoelstellings en behoeftes. Ek wil die gesprek begin met die nieuwe minister in die portefeuille en met andere nationale regeringsvernoote om te kyk na die moendlikheid om water oor te neem as een provinciale mandaat. Ons moet meer beheer kan he oor ons eie toekomst in die opzicht. Ons is hoopvol op een goeie reenvalseisoen in die komende wintermaande, maar daar is nog niks concreets om aan vast te hou nie. Daarom doen ons een beroep op die gemeenskap om saam te werk en water te bespaar, om te verseker ons bereik die 2019 seisoen met water nog in ons stelsel beskikbaar. Deputy Speaker, vote 9 for the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning amounts to a total budget for the year of 604 million rand. 50% of the amount is allocated to Cape Nature, the Western Cape Government custodian of biodiversity in the province. I want to touch on budgetary challenges and note that in the 2017 adjustment budget, vote 9 allocation was reduced by 38,8 million rand as part of the provincial government reprioritization of the budget to tackle the impact of the ongoing drought disaster. Deputy Speaker, the priority spending areas for this department over the upcoming MTF period includes an amount of 41 million that has been prioritized for drought management and water security initiatives. The current drought has put the spotlight on the importance of water security, ongoing focus and awareness around water planning and management in the province is crucial. In this regard, we are proud of our achievements with projects in the Burke River catchment area and the plan to roll out the project to the Breda River kicked off last year. 
Amongst others, this work speaks to promoting sustainable land use practices across all sectors, reducing the impact of agriculture on the Breda River water quality to an acceptable level and to promote sustainable agriculture, enhancing the rehabilitation of alien plant clearing areas. The Department's ongoing climate change response plans have been allocated 22.8 million over the MTF period. Currently, climate change initiatives being driven by the province include assessments of the economic risk and opportunities of climate resilient investment in the Western Cape, as well as ongoing municipal support to the five district municipalities to enable them to develop and to implement a climate change response strategy to each district in the province. Deputy Speaker, the green economy falls under PSG 1 and also contributes to PSG 4, which speaks to enabling a resilient, sustainable, quality and inclusive living environment. One of the exciting initiatives in further development, the green economy includes a project called Wastepreneurs Program. Through this program, the department aims to support formal and informal resource collectors through the development of a business diagnostic tool. Achbar Speaker, Deputy Speaker, program wat kyk na die afval en vullis in ons provincie gaan al meer belangrik word, want die volgende krisis in die Westkap naast die heersende waterkrisis gaan een vulliskrisis wees. Ons is bezig om uit plek uit te raak, recht oor die provincie, vir die storting van vullis. Daar is een dringende gesprek wat benodig word, gaan word rondom wat ons moet doen om ons toenemende volumes vullis um, te hanteer. Om aan te hou, om soveel te begrawe, gaan nie meer langer een volhoudbare optie wees nie. Alternatieve opties sluit in reese herwinning en verbrandingsaanlegte. Dit gaan echter gepaard gaan met, eie, met sy eie uitdagings, soos kostes, om dit te ontwikkel en om die gemeenskap te kry om daarin in te koop. Ek wil nie te min hier die geleentheid gebruik maak om een beroep te doen op u en die publiek daarbuiten om wat wat reed so baie doen om water en kracht te bespaar, om ook hulle denken te verander rondom vullis. Ons, ons het nodig dat allemaal saamwerk en een gedragsverandering te bewerkstellig met die herwinning van vullis. Van my kant af het ek die departement gevra om onderzoek in te stel rondom die uitbreiding van herwinningsfaciliteiten en die bekamping van afvalplastiek in die provincie. Ons wil onder meer een beroep doen op groot bezighede wat groot volumes plastiek en papier gebruik om saam met ons te werk om ons en ons municipaliteite om ontwikkeling op groot skaalse herwinningsprojekte mee bij te staan. Dit is ons visie om in elke dorp en stad in die Westkap een groot herwinningsaanleg te vestig. Ons wil en moet een kultuur van herwinning begin ontwikkel. In die opzicht onderzoek ik thans die plastic en die plastic strooikie probleem. Ek wil my nationale collega's vraag waar hier gaan die plastic heffen. Ons neem kennis dus in die jongste nationale begroting weer met 50% verhoog. Ons wil vraag dat die geld om heen of gering fans word om te zien dat het gaan waarvoor dit bedoel is, die uitsluitelijke doel waarvoor dit ingestel is die skep van een herwinningsfunksie in die provincie om van die afval ontsla te raak. Ek hoop dat ons nationale collega's sal dit oorweeg om een deel van die geld om ons te voorzien zodat so ons een project kan begin om die probleem behoorlijk aan te spreek. Indien ons nie groter samenwerken en antwoorde kry nie, sal ons moed ons opties oorweeg. Dit kan insluit die onderzoek naar die moendlikheid om een algehele verbod te plaas op producten soos plastic sakke en plastic strooikies in die Westkaap. Ek wil te loops bezighede soos de Ocean Basket franchise geluk wens met al besluit om weg te doen met plastic strooikies en ons wil andere bezighede aanmoedig om soortgelijke besluiten te neem. Deputy Speaker, oor die MTF periode sal 79 miljoen rand gebruik word om verder uit te brei aan die bestaande en hoog succesvolle RCWPUU project in die Westkap. Die bestaande drie verkoose dorpen in die RCEP WPUU program sal binnenkort die bestaande opgradering in hulle gemeenskap en termen van die RCEP program voltooi. 
the 2018-19 financial year should see the RCEP Phase 2 in full swing and being landed in all seven new municipalities. A number of infrastructure projects should commence in these municipalities. However, the focus is on change of mindset and insight into how municipalities can plan towns differently with a planning-led approach and also to address the spatial realities of the South Africa's past more coherently. It will also be about planning better with other line departments, specifically the social cluster. Work in collaboration with PST3 should come to fruition. The existing three RCEP municipalities should be near completion of their projects in the originally selected towns of Friedenburg, Malmesbury and Worcester. This financial year, uh, uh, organizational development investigation for the institutionalization of the RCEP program into the department will be initiated. In terms of the VPUU program, is nearing the, an end as main thrust of the program ends in June 2018. However, some possible changes, exchange rates gains on the remaining funds from the German Development Bank may provide opportunities for additional projects being considered beyond June 2018. Ach, Deputy Speaker, as it comes by the Kaapse Natuurbewaring, the begroting for the year is the taken on 401 million rand to spend here. The greatest part of this begroting is given to the provincial theory, but the rest will be included in the services such as overnight accommodation and reservations for tourists to be here. Kaap's Cape Nature is a priority besteding area in the coming year sluit in technological upgrading of inlichtingstelsels with the eye daarop om meer doeltreffendheid te bewerkstellig. Ecotourisme blijft top prioriteit in dit zal voor allen riem onder de harp om te zien hoe beleggings en infrastructuur bij Cape Nature oorde oor die afgelopen paar jaar vruchten afwerp. Reservaten zoals Siedeberg, Kogelberg, Rogopan, Grootvadersbos is bijzonder gewild en lever een groot bijdrage aan die inkomstenstromen van Cape Nature. Kogelberg bijvoorbeeld zijn bezettingscijfer is 87% en een uitstekende prestatie. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Cape Nature is committed and will continue to focus on invasive alien plant clearing efforts in the mountain catchment areas. In the past three financial years, Cape Nature has cleared out more than 250,000 hectares of alien vegetation in its nature reserves. These efforts will be upscaled in priority areas to ensure maximum water reaches our dams. In addition, to providing millions of litres of water <coughs> of more water to our strained systems. These clearing initiatives also create valuable employment opportunities for SMMEs and, and people often located in remote rural areas. Cape Nature manages about 6% of the total surface area of the Western Cape province with large parts of the encompassing the high yield water catchment areas. These vast areas are prioritized and cleared of alien vegetation according to an integrated strategy as resource constraints does not allow us to clear the invaded areas at a required rate. As additional funding becomes available, more opportunities will be created to upscale up operations and employ more people in this regard. The Department in Cape Nature Ze ambtenaren het weer voor de afgelopen jaren het stekende werk onder toenemende druk verricht. Het departement heeft weer een schoon audit behaal. Dit is nu reeds meer dan tien jaar wat het departement het vermaakt. En ik wil voor die hoofd meneer Piet van Seil bedank en zijn hele span geluk wens met die prestatie. Kijk, Nijtje het ook in de afgelopen boekjaar een schoon audit gekregen verbetering op die vorige jaar zijn ongekwalificeerde audit. Dr. Rosina Omar Baie geluk in jou afweesigheid en ons wens jou alle sterkte toe met jou gezondheid. Baie, baie dankie. Die achtbare lid Simmer. Dankie, Deputy Speaker. Uh, Deputy Speaker, it is a great pleasure to stand here today to address this house. 
in my role as the chairperson of the standing committee on environmental affairs and development planning. But it is, it is also exceptionally important that I and we perform our oversight function with integrity and in the interest of the people of this province. Deputy Speaker, it pleases me to hear that the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning remains committed to developing a responsive and efficient organizational culture. The department, the department has taken the necessary steps to develop a resilient and sustainable environment that will also be enjoyed by future generations. Deputy Speaker, one of the key challenges facing our province at this particular moment in time is the issue of water security. Water is a key enabler of future provincial economic growth and environmental sustainability. Surface water is currently our province's main source and will be under increasing pressure with the expected decrease in the province's rainfall levels. The ongoing drought has forced our government to be far more resourceful around our water usage and we have put in place a number of controls to address this risk, one of them being the protection and improvements of vital water sources in our province. Deputy Speaker, through the ongoing improvements and investments being made in the Berg River Improvement Plan, or BRIP, and the Breda River Environmental Resource Protection Plan, or ERPP, in the projects, the Department firmly believes that these projects will play an integral role in creating healthier river systems, which will enhance the economy of the Western Cape by creating more, job, more permanent jobs in the agriculture sector and new industries such as the agritourism sector. Furthermore, increased job opportunities will be created due to the vast improvement in the quantity and quality of water within the Berg and Breda River system. Deputy Speaker, with the, with the ongoing drought, ensuring that we have healthy and resilient ecosystems is even more difficult and complex than ever before. Not only is our province one of the most ecologically complex and biodiverse areas in the world, we also are home to more than 70% of one of the world's six floristical kingdoms, but it is also one of the primary water catchment areas in South Africa. It is one, it is on this note that I would like to commend the department for allocating as much as 302,533,000 over the MTF to Cape Nature, our public entity with a statutory mandate and responsibility for biodiversity conservation in the Western Cape. And I know that Dr. Omar and the team at Cape Nature will execute this responsibility diligently and effectively. Deputy Speaker, the 2018-19 MTF will see Cape Nature continue its job creating job creation footprint and facilitation of social development and functional training interventions across the province where EPWP projects are implemented in their nature reserves. It envisages that a total of 450 EPWP employment contracts will be entered into by these recipients with Cape Nature during the reporting year. Already, over 60% of the EPWP participants in Cape Nature are mainly female and they are youth. It is also welcoming that Cape Nature has maintained the stance that appointed participants will continue to come from different communities across our province. Deputy Speaker, I would also like to use this opportunity to thank Minister Bedell, the HOD, and all staff in the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning for the ongoing commitment in protecting our rich and diverse biodiversity within a cycle of tighter fiscal policy. As the governing party in the Western Cape, Deputy Speaker, we remain committed to enabling spatial resilience and planning of human settlements and infrastructure that are effective in proactively protecting critical natural resources as well as ensuring long-term sustainability and resilience. The future depends on the choices which we make today. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Honourable Member Diana. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I said Diana, not Yankee. <laughs> Thank Order. you, Deputy Speaker. <laughs> Member, you may continue. The Constitution in Chapter 2, the Bill of Rights, 
provides in section 24, everyone has the right to have the environment protected for the benefit of present and future generations through reasonable legislative and other measures. The, the role of the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning is twofold. Safeguarding the natural environment of the Western Cape for future generations, while sustainable developing the landscape in which we live. The mandate of the Standing Committee on Environmental Affairs and Development Planning is to maintain oversight over the executive member and his department and its entity, including the implementation of legislation and to hold them accountable to the Western Cape Provincial Parliament and consider and report on legislation, other matters and annual reports referred to it by the speaker. The executive authority of the Western Cape government lies with the premier and the executive authority of the department lies with the MEC. Both of these political heads have failed to comply with the Western Cape Constitution and implement Section 71 of the Western Cape Constitution 1997. Both of these political heads have failed to create enabling legislation to give effect to Section 71 of the Western Cape Constitution. The Commissioner for the Environment is an independent and impartial ombudsman for the environment. Now more than ever, it is necessary to have an impartial watchdog in the Western Cape due to the negligence Cape water crisis the DA has created. We are witnessing the unsustainable over abstraction of groundwater, desalination of contaminated seawater, and the pollution of the Cape Flats aquifer with water, with wastewater. By failing to comply with the Western Cape Constitution, the Premier and MEC violated Section 133 three of the National Constitution of South Africa. It states that members of the Executive Council of a province must a act in accordance with the constitution and if a provincial constitution has been passed for the province also that constitution the speaker of this legislature also has a duty to comply with the provincial and national constitutions the speaker does not hold the executive accountable in that the provincial legislature and its members must in terms of section 107 of the national constitution before members of a provincial legislature begin to perform their functions in the legislature, they must swear or affirm faithfulness to the Republic and obedience to the Constitution in accordance with Schedule 2 and not a party. Members of the DA in the legislature who will be supporting this vote today know that you are breaking your oath of office and you are violating the constitutions of the country and the province. Shame on you. The MEC acknowledges that the Western Cape has some of the driest areas on planet. What has the MEC done to combat climate change and related issues in this regard? This budget provides no program to battle the effects of climate change and efforts to mitigate against the fourth year of the worst drought the province has seen in recent history. The whole day zero won't happen in 2018. Thing has been a bit strange as nothing has changed in terms of the supply, augmentation, or rainfall. Media reports and independent water consumption websites conflict with the city of Cape Town and provincial government. Or Musi Maiman, depending on what day you are, you are asked who is leading the water resiliency plan in the province. With the current usage and dam levels, it's been reported that the Cape's dam levels will reach 10% on the 21st of June 2018. One then wonders how much rainfall did the DA government budget for the announcement that our dam levels won't reach 10%. The biggest dam in the province, Tia Vatos Group, stood at 10,7% on 19th March 2018. Full Flay Dam at 14,8%, these are indeed worrying figures. This brings the credibility of DA's hashtag day zero into question. Too much of a PR crisis to announce the complete removal of the day zero, label which only the Western Cape uses during a water shortage. All the uncertainty and more sad news, three major aquifers project in Atlantis, at Table Mountain and on the Cape Flats hydrants, meters and valves have been stolen and damaged 
at aquifer drilling sites July last year. Why have equipment worth millions not safeguarded for our water security needs? Water is a key enabler of future provincial economic growth and environmental sustainability. However, many wastewater treatment works are not operating optimally for a variety of reasons, one of which is the lack of skilled personnel to manage and operate the works properly. It's coming from the Blue Book. Is it guaranteed that the communities will be getting clean and safe water as per required by Constitution and the National Development Plan? The annual performance plan speaks to water growth and development. Acknowledging the water crisis is one thing. What initiatives have been implemented which added in additional supply of water? Water sustainable growth and development has decreased by 2.1 million from 2017. This DA really has no plan. This budget shows no relation to the problems facing the environment and how allocated money will improve the environmental challenges we are facing, facing in the Western Cape. We welcome the increase of equitable share funding from National, which led to an increase of 48 million. This includes 16 million of Cape Nature's Kuchelberg project and additional funding for three evaluations to be conducted. And also, we welcome the inclusion of the seven municipalities to the RECP uh, VPUU program. However, we are concerned that the department did not include the whole central Karu district municipality, considering the high unemployment and, and crime rates in that area. The departmental budget has no mechanism to address past imbalances re relating to employment equity. Whites make up 50% of senior and top management. They are overrepresented compared to their economic active population. Only one black African is not sufficient when they make up 40% of provincial economic active population. What will the department do, do to promote employment equity in a province where 72% of the land is owned by whites, coloreds only own 15% of the land, and Africans again only 1%. The DA is really not representative in running and who effectively owns resources in the province. It must be tough to be a colored or black leader in the DA when they will make you stand here next month and require you to speak against the expropriation of land without compensation. Imagine member MEC Albert Fritz standing here and saying whites must only own 72% of the land. We are successful as the DA to have Kalats owning 15% of the land, whilst the Kalats are 45% of the Western Cape. Imagine DA leader Matikize telling Africans that this 1% is good that Africans own, while they make up 40% of the Western Cape population. This will be evidence that the DA is a party of whites, as former President Nelson Mandela once said, open quote, you must not be misled by a party that only cares for blacks on the eve of elections. No white party can run this country, no matter how they cover up by getting a few black stooges. The whites remain bosses. They remain a white party. Close quote. Order. Order. <laughs> in con in conclusion. Order. It's a cult. Just take your seat. Honourable Chief Whip. Uh, uh, Deputy Speaker, as amusing as the other side might find it, I think there has been a ruling or there's a pending ruling on, on the, these, the, these, racial, these racial epithets. And I, I ask that you consider this matter, please. Yes, I will consider. I'm listening very carefully. The member must also get back to the, to the, the actual vote. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Don't waste my time, Chief Whip of TA. Order, Member. Please continue. In conclusion, as the ANC, we are calling for equal access and enjoyment of our natural resources. Our environmental rights must be equally observed. When natural, natural resources are consumed, the people share and work the land. I thank you. We must listen. Order. 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 Honourable Kondlu, Honourable Diana. 
Honourable Diana, you've just had an opportunity to speak and you continue speaking. Uh, I see the Minister to reply. Sure. Um, thank you, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Honourable Deputy Speaker, let me start off by thanking my department. I see they scattered all over. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, we're really fortunate to have this quality of, of, of that's all the department's officials sitting here, Richard. Yeah. Oh, no. um, I really want to thank them for their dedication and hard work towards the Western Cape and towards South Africa. They, they, lead, they lead and they work with our national colleagues and they lead a lot of the national programs. So thank you very much for that. To the Honourable Chairperson of my Standing Committee, Tertius, thank you very much. Um, you've touched on all the important points, the water, the, the, um, the health of our ecosystem. You have all about our Bergrevier and our Bede Rivier program. And natuurlijk is our rivier and the quality of our water and our rivier ongelooflijk belangrijk. So is our luchtbesoedeling and the quality of our lucht, which is in awesome. Alles wat hier die departement aan raak zal bepalen of onze beter in een gezonde toekomst voor ons nageslag nalaat. So baie dankie vir jou um, voor jou commitment en dedication en dat jij ons tot verantwoording roep, ons waardeer dit. Ons besef dit is niet een rol om populair te wees nie, maar ons respecteer daar die oorsig rol en ons sal alles in ons vermoe doen om saam met julle te werk as 'n staande komitee. To the member Diana, I don't know what to say. Um, to be quite honest with you, um, that that you that 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 a member that a member of the ANC dared to quote the order that that a member of the ANC dared to quote the Constitution of the Western Cape, where none of their promises even got the Constitution. You know, it's just mind-boggling. Um, and then quote, quote something and, and then quote something outrageous like the commissioner would have prevented us from a water crisis. Shame. Um, this, but she also go on to contradict herself by mentioning and acknowledging the fact that we've in our fourth order order. There's too much interjections now. Please come to order. The minister has got an opportunity to reply now. And then going on and contradict herself by acknowledging the fact that in, we in the fourth dry year. So, and again, colleagues and ladies and gentlemen and, and honourable deputy chair, let me again try and explain day zero. The whole day zero is that, and that is what the difference is between the ANC and the DA. We plan for next year to safeguard the source for next year. <coughs> and therefore, when the dams, when the dams get at 13.5%, we need to make it very uncomfortable for people so that we can protect the source for next year. Order. But, <coughs> Part of part of managing part of managing the system. Part of managing the system, honourable deputy speaker, is to shift the water between the dams. Fortunately, we do have very good engineers that's able to do that, and that's part of managing the system. To reduce demand, and I can tell you now that the day zero concept worked. It all of a sudden the message landed within our communities. It's not a popular message, but we're not there to be popular. We're there to protect the source. And for the first time, and for the first time, for the first time, and order, order. And for the first time, honourable deputy speaker, and I don't know of any other place in the world to manage to get their water consumption from 1.2 billion litres a day down to 550 million litres. I don't know of another place that's managed to do that. Um, Honourable Deputy Speaker, the Honourable Diana touch on, <clears throat> on personnel and the quality of personnel and so forth. I just want to mention to the Honourable Diana that the Department of Water Affairs in 2004 had 
250 engineers. Today, they've got 80 engineers, of which 60 of those engineers don't have five years' experience. And then she wants to point a finger to the DA. And then I want to state, Honourable Deputy Speaker, that we don't run on a race base, colour base, because we believe that people Order. have quality. Order. And, and Honourable, you want me to talk to the conference. Let me talk briefly to that then. Aangezien die achtbare squats are junior so slim is, that I come net go recht here, achtbare speaker, deputy speaker, die negen provinciale leiders van die DA is daar net een wit persoon. Nie dat dit saak maak nie, maar dis hoe ons stem. We are the most diverse party, and we are very proud of that. Member Diana mentioned that we only care before the election. Well, order, order, Minister. Minister, just one second. We cannot continue the way it's going now with the four ladies at the back continuously speaking at the same time with the Minister. Yeah. Honourable Speaker. I'm it's... watching you, Honourable Lecker, but your, your colleagues next to you on both sides are definitely guilty. Uh, Honourable Please Speaker, continue, yeah. uh, Honourable Speaker, let me end off because I think that the ANC is thinking this is a joke. This is very serious. The DA will protect the environmental rights of this province with competent personnel and staff working with us. We will foresee that we give our children a good and clean province in future. I thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate on this vote. That also concludes the business for the day. The House is adjourned.